Here's our setup. We are on an IFR flight to Siler City, where we are planning to fly the RNAV approach to runway 22. We are starting our flight plan at Harnett, but that's only for convenience. We are actually going to be starting our flight over Harnett at 4,000 feet. As we can see, looking at the active flight plan, we have already loaded the approach and we can see all the fixes leading up to the approach using Oseco as the initial approach fix. As we can also see, we have a current vertical navigation profile automatically set for us with a descent to 3,000 feet at Opuxi. You can see a vertical speed target of about 600 feet per minute based upon a descent flight path angle of 2.5 degrees. Just so you're aware, that can be changed, but each manufacturer has a default setup in the system, and this is the one in this system. It also indicates how far we have to the top of our descent, and that's 22 minutes and 40 seconds. But keep in mind as we look at this one that our currently active waypoint is the airport. So that 22 minutes, 40 seconds right now is based on flying first to Siler City and then over to the initial approach fit, which is not what we are going to do. But we're stopping here just to take a look at the screen. As we fly along, we get the following instruction. Proceed direct Oseco, cross Oseco at 3,200 feet, cleared for the RNAV 2-2 approach into Siler City. Well, let's set this up. The first thing we do is turn direct Oseco. We hit the FMS cursor, we cursor down to Oseco, and we hit direct and activate direct Oseco. Now that we're stabilized, we can turn our attention to setting up our additional fix in the VNAV profile. And in this case, it's going to be to cross Oseco at 3,200 feet. We highlight Oseco in the flight plan, and we change that number to 3,200. Notice when we do that, it changes to cyan or blue. What you'll see when you look at that screen, some of the altitudes are in blue and some of the altitudes are in white. The difference between the two is the items that are blue are part of our active VNAV profile. If we're flying the profile, these will be target altitudes. The white ones are simply informational. They're not part of the flight plan in the sense that they are not targets that the profile is intended to meet. For example, we'll see that the final approach fix at IPSC is in white rather than in blue. That just means that the VNAF profile is not going to go to IPSC down to 2300. And the reason for that is that once we turn inbound and IPSC, which is the final approach fix, becomes the active waypoint in the flight plan, then we are in the territory where the LPV glide path is going to be coming into play. And so the system's going to switch to it. It is no longer going to be flying the vertical navigation profile, which is essentially an en route and terminal function. Instead, it's going to be switching to the glide path. And we're going to see that happen. But as we now look down to the current VNAV profile, we can see that our active VNAV waypoint, our vertical waypoint, is 3,200 feet at Oseco, and we are 11 minutes away from our top of descent, and you could actually see the top of descent on the map screen identified as top of descent. Now that we're fully configured and the VNF profile has been created, let us engage it. We engage VPath by hitting the VNAV button on the autopilot. When we do that, we can see that VPath shows up as being armed in the PFD flight strip. But there is more we have to do. There are a couple of gotchas. As it is right now, we will be able to get prompted for our descents, but the autopilot won't fly them. And that's because our target altitude, our selected altitude at this point, is 4,000 feet. 
VPATH doesn't make the assumption that you actually want to go down from that altitude until you tell it. And the way we do that is by changing our selected altitude. In this case, what we are going to do is we're going to change our selected altitude to our minimum VNAV altitude. So we're going to change it to 2300. There's our target altitude because that's our altitude at the final approach fix. And so we're going to bring it all the way down. People who fly a star into an airport, which has multiple step towns, will bring it all the way down to the bottom altitude of the star as their target so that the system understands that we actually want to fly the profile. That is one of the gotchas in the system. In order to have the autopilot actually fly the vertical profile, you have to give it a selected altitude that is at the bottom of that profile. Otherwise, it won't do it itself. This brings us to gotcha number two. If we take a look at our current vertical navigation profile, you'll see that our time to top of descent is about six minutes. If the time to top of descent is more than five minutes, the system does not assume that you actually want to follow it. Let's think of it as the profile has timed out when the top of descent is over five minutes. There are three ways we can correct for this situation. One is simply to wait until the top of descent shows as being less than five minutes away. The second is to engage it at the time we set it up, but re-engage it when that time is less than five minutes. In this simulation, we're going to use the third way the system prompts you to re-engage it, which we'll see as we get further down in the simulation. As we move ahead in our flight, we are about a minute and a half outside our top of descent. Looking at our PFD flight strip, we're still direct Oseco. We're about six, six and a half miles away. GPS is active. Autopilot is active. Altitude hold at 4,000 feet is active. Our vertical path is armed. And our selected altitude is below what we need for our vertical path. Recalling we had armed vertical path more than five minutes out, let's watch and see what happens. When we are a minute away from the top of the scent, what we're going to see is that the white vertical path is going to start flashing. What the flashing means is that it is not going to engage. There is our gotcha at work. The correction for it is to go over to the vertical navigation button on the autopilot and press it once. You will see that now it has stopped flashing and is it is armed once again. Looking at the rest of the system, you'll see that a number of other things have also taken place. First, we now have a box with the vertical path altitude of 3,200 feet shown in magenta. The second thing you'll see is that our glide path needle has become active, but with a difference. When we have a, an LPV glide path, we have a G in this box and a diamond here, because this is not the LPV glide path, but basically an en route vertical path. We have a V for vertical path and a sideways V to indicate it. There it goes. Green flashing indicating it's becoming active. Vertical path is now green. And you'll see that because we have a bottom of descent at 3,200 feet, altitude hold has now been armed. And after we make the turn and we come down to 3,200 feet, you will see it will level off. By the way, the notification of bottom of descent and top of descent in one minute is also to allow us to make changes in power as necessary for the descent and the level off. We'll see it's captured, it's heading down. Here comes our left turn. Altitude 
is in the process of being engaged. And as we hit 32, altitude hold is engaged. We are in the turn to a Seco, and we have leveled off. Now you can see, looking at the current VNAV profile, it is now 3,000 at epoxy with a top of descent in about a minute and a half. The other thing that we can do here, and we actually could have done this earlier, I'm going to activate the approach. Now remember what the activate the approach does in the G1000, it arms the glide path. So now when we look up at our flight strip, you'll see that our altitude hold is 3,200 feet. Our vertical path is armed, but our glide path is also armed. Let's watch what happens as we turn final. You will notice that we have reached the top of the scent and are being prompted for the turn at epoxy at the same time. Let's pause for a moment to consider what is going on. When we hand fly and are going to descend to the 3,000 foot Osiko epoxy leg, our tendency is to cross Osiko and start our descent immediately. The vertical navigation profile is not doing that. Instead, the vertical navigation profile is calculating where to start the descent to reach the target altitude at the target location based upon descent rate profile in the system. In this case, with the descent being only 200 feet, we're almost at Osiko by the time we start down to meet it. We will see the same concept at work as we complete the turn to the final approach course. And now as we turn, let's take a moment to think about what happens next. If we're flying manually, we have a choice. We can, at this point, descend down to 2300 to capture the glide path there. And you'll see that the autopilot doesn't do that. And what you'll see is our glide path has now become active. And you can see we're below glide path. So we now have our glide path G and we have our diamond needle. And what the system is going to do, it's not going to descend to 2,300 feet. It's going to just sit there nice and quietly at 3,000 feet and capture the glide path, the LPV glide path. We continue at 3,000 feet, capture the glide path, and start down to the LPV decision altitude, where we end our simulation.